in law school, it, there's a very common view that law is somehow set apart from the rest of politics and uh, messy human affairs, and that we as lawyers are doing something else somehow uh, on a higher plane from regular politics. And I don't think that's true at all. <laughs> I was a first year law student at Harvard right around the time that the fossil fuel divestment movement was taking off. Hi, this is Ben Frana from Divest Harvard. I'm calling because there's a student protest for fossil fuel divestment happening right now. There's a very active group of which I became part trying to get the university to take their endowments out of funding fossil fuel companies. And they just did not want to even talk about it. I need that door wide open as well as the stairs. If the fire department comes here, nobody can stay here. Ultimately, we started a campaign of civil disobedience doing blockades. So we were looking for an open and transparent dialogue with Harvard Corporation about divestment, and so we can only speak with someone who has the power to negotiate on behalf of the corporation. Our only request was for an open meeting to talk about these investments, and rather than have that meeting, they had a student arrested. Harvard's slogan has veritas, you know, truth in it, and I felt like the administration was hiding from the truth of what their investments are doing to the world and the futures of their students. Alice and Ted and I all met through the fossil fuel divestment activism at Harvard, and when nothing else was working, um, we got together and started to talk about litigation. University officials wouldn't meet with members of the campaign unless it was behind closed doors and so it became clear to the campaign that the best way to get them to go um, on the record you know in a public kind of way and engage with our arguments was to you know file a lawsuit against them. Good morning I'm Justice Seifer to my right is Justice Granger our first case is Harvard Climate Justice Coalition and others versus Harvard Corporation and others 2015 P0905. No judge wants their courtroom to just be used as, you know, a stage for theater. But there's also a long and distinguished tradition in the law of using courtrooms and legal advocacy in sort of more of a First Amendment tradition, a way of allowing juries who are representatives of a community to really engage um, in a real way with some of the most pressing issues that are facing a community. Under our second count, our tort count, we are representing the interests of future generations. Future generations, of course, are not able to come into court and represent their own interests. And in the special circumstances of climate change where these interests, these injuries are far from speculative, they're severe and certain, we think that there must be some judicial flexibility to allow their interests to be heard before the court. Alice and Ted and I were pretty disillusioned by what we learned in law school about the existing options for environmental law to respond to climate change. And I think we all shared both that disillusionment um, and also inspiration from the courageous acts of protest that we were witnessing across the country and across the world, really. And we realized that that's where we wanted to put our law degrees <laughs> and do our legal work. We started CDP after we graduated. Most of our work so far has involved providing criminal defense representation and other legal support to climate activists. I think addressing the climate crisis does give us an opportunity to think about what systems we do want to have and potentially remake some of the ones that aren't working that well. A good example is the necessity defense because it asks the jury to consider not just did this person trespass, but is it acceptable to break the law and what are the values that we care about most as a community um, and as a society. And we just, we have so little time <laughs> to address the problem. I think that's, you know, part of why um, Kelsey and Ted and I felt 
that we needed to start this organization right out of law school, even though everyone was telling us that that was a bad idea. And, you know, you shouldn't hang your own shingle without having gotten any experience first. Um, but we really had the sense that people in the climate movement um, needed lawyers who understood them.